Um, good morning. This is Biology IGCSE 0610. And this is a topical question of expiratory system that we want to discuss. Um, so I'll go one by one the questions, read them and explain and give you the answer. The first question says, which diet will cause the liver to produce the most urea? You should know that the urea um, is produced uh, and also when there is protein diet, the protein content of the diet, because that's where inside the liver, um, because the nitrogen should be is quite soluble and that's the nitrogen part of the protein which has been omitted and removed from the chain so and forms urea so and also amino acids they contain nitrogen so inside the liver there are deamination happening there and the uh, amino group is removed from the chain and then to make that product less toxic then the form of urea so the more protein you have, the more amino acid you have, you have more nitrogen uh, molecules. Then, so the, this should be uh, more work for your liver to break down those amino acids and remove that nitrogen from your blood. So more protein you take, you will have more nitrogen to be removed. So um, perhaps more urea. So the answer here, is of course uh, the one that showing high protein content. The option one is just talking about carbohydrate and fat. It's not relevant. There is no protein in it because we are looking for a protein which has amino acid and nitrogen. High fat, fiber, no. Fat and low protein. Between C and D, that both of them they contain protein. We are looking for the that option that has high protein in it. Low protein, no. It's, it's a diet contains high protein, so we in the liver we work on it to break down the amino acids and produce more urea. So option C is correct. Is the answer. Question number two, what is an example of excretion in the mammals? The example of the excretion in the mammals, we said we have to know about excretion itself and actually what that means. We said that that's the excretion is the removal of the waste products from the body. If I want to give you a better explanation of this, excretion is the removal of the waste products of metabolism from living organisms, okay? Like, for example, especially the nitrogenous wastes. And excretion is, as I told you, is different from defecation. Excretion is uh, the process which red body of the undigested, undigested and unabsorbed food remains and bacteria, but not a, um, sorry, defecation is the process through which you get rid of the undigested food, unabsorbed food and the, uh, the waste product of the digestion, uh, but it's not the metabolic end product and it's not a respiration end product. In the excretion, for example, can happen in the humans and also in the plants, as I told you. In the human, there are four main excretory organs. One of them is lung, that helps you to get rid of the carbon dioxide and excess water. And then your skin, so that causes the water, salt, and urea to be excreted. Then the kidneys you have that excretes water, urea, excess minerals, and salt in uh, inactive hormones and drugs in your body and liver which excretes boiled pigments which results in the destruction of the old red blood cells related in the with bile in the feces so regarding the all these uh, explanations yeah example of the excretion the release of hormones from glands 
this is not just the hormones is being released from the gland so and goes into your inside your blood to affect one of the organs to stimulate it to signal it so it is not an excretion you should get rid of the waste product through your body it goes out of your body this is, doesn't go out it's just a release of the hormones from the glands and the release of saliva so this is not the answer the release of saliva into your mouth again it's like saliva is a liquid is an enzyme it contains enzymes that they break down the foods help in digestion and so this is a still that enzyme which is released inside your body and helping the digestion is not going out this is not something that you get rid of so this is not the answer. C, the removal of undigested food to the anus. This is, I told you, this is not excretion. This is defecation. This is called as defecation. You get rid of the undigested food to anus. So this is the end of the digestive system. So this is not the answer. So what is left is the answer. The removal of urea or kidney. Yes, when the kidney, the produce, they, they remove the urea in a form of the urine and then send it out of your body. That is the answer. So, answer is D. Question number three. Where is urea formed? Always remember, the urea is formed in the liver and then it is being uh condensed and formed the urine as a urine the urine is formed in the kidney so the the urea in the liver the urine in the kidney and then it is stored in the urine bladder okay for sending out so where it is formed or produced urea it is in liver. I don't want to go on with the others. So the answer is B. Which substance is lost from the body of a healthy person by the kidneys, but not by the lungs? So in a healthy person, the carbon dioxide is a gas. All the gases, they can be excreted. The gas like oxygen and the thing else that the gas exchange organ is lungs the lungs so the carbon dioxide is created through the lungs so this is not the answer because so which one through the kidney but not the lungs so a is not answer glucose glucose is an essential molecule it should be kept and you need it, your body needs it. So all of it will be reabsorbed in the kidney, sent back to the blood. If there is an excess of the glucose, it will be stored as a glycogen inside your liver. But still you keep it. It's a bigger molecule of glucose. It's heavy, insoluble. It remains there inside the kidney until you need it again. It can be broken down into glucose, small, insoluble glucose molecules. So why do not send it out and a healthy person shouldn't find this in the urine water most of the water is necessary and in a healthy person you shouldn't have too much water it depends most of the water if you have excess can be like gone to sweating or into as a water vapor into your lungs or else yeah in the urine also you find it but the most component are of that, or the thing that is going out of your livers or out of your urinary system is urea. You're going to get rid of the urea, which has nitrogen in it, and that nitrogen is toxic. So answer is C. And move on to the next question. Do I have a diagram again of the some organs? in which urea is found, okay? So which, now the question is that, which organ makes urea and which organ removes it from the blood? Again, the same question, the same uh, concept, but in a different way uh, it has been questioned. So through the diagrams and all those things. So option one, which one makes urea and which one removes it, the urea from the blood? You know that the place that makes the urea is liver liver makes urea 
and the urine is made in the kidneys yeah so the so p is the liver is the biggest gland into your body that makes you yachty so where is the uh, liver p and q is kidney r is bladder don't forget so if you want to show which one removes it and which one makes it and which one removes so making is p so which option do you have p a even without reading the rest i know that a should be answered because none of the other options they have this uh, the making you are column p so this is the only one which is p so the answer should be this one i removes the urea from the mud of course q so answer is a question number six what is a function uh, of the kidneys of a healthy person again so a healthy person uh, should break down the toxins the breaking down the toxins is the job of the liver eliminate all the salts and so no we need salts we need some some excess salts and the minerals and the ions can be eliminated but usually we need them um the salts are very important to balance that uh ph and everything inside our body so we should keep it we need it that uh, the excess amount always like a salt and oils can be sent out like a water just the excess and retain all the water not exactly all the water can be retained some are said if it is excess can should be uh, excreted but reabsorbing all glucose you shouldn't find in a healthy person kidney or the urine any glucose if you find glucose in your urine you have definitely a problem you're not healthy so answer is C. Question number seven. What are hormones removed from the blood and broken down in the human body? The hormones, again. So gallbladder is a very actually the digestive enzymes are being or the digestive juices like the bile also is being produced and it is then uh, at the uh, where the uh, digested food from the stomach that come out and enter into the uh, initial part of the uh, small intestine and the uh, ileum. This gallbladder empties the bile into it for further digestion of the like fats and all. So gallbladder is not responsible for removal of the hormones. It is just for producing uh, digestive enzymes and the juices and bile. Uh, kidneys are excretory systems. They remove uh, they remove the things like so it means that they don't they are not responsible to break down the uh, hormones or the substances they just absorption and reabsorption or filtration happens there and whatever is excess like salt and water they will be removed and all the glucose and the things will be sent back well it doesn't break down anything stomach it just breaks down the molecules it's not for removal of anything it just in the digestion uh have uh, happens there it has acid and there's some digestive enzymes there so the stomach is for digestion liver is where the breakdown and removal of the hormones happens there so answer is c question number eight where is uh, where is urea produced in the human body and from which chemicals it is it produced so urea is always again produced are repeated many times in the liver so in among these options only option d has this answer so i know that the d is correct so i do not continue with that you know in order to save your time you have to manage your time in the exam properly so but for you the kidneys are not responsible for making you here it just for removal and uh, they make urine and they mix the urea with the other things like the salt and anything and then make urine and then uh, excrete it out of your body 
so an intestine is just for the uh, defecation like the the send out the uh, un uh, indigested foods outside of your body and this is not anything to do anything about the excretion and about which chemical is it produced from is of course the urea is made of the uh, amino acids or protein are made of the small building blocks called as amino acids and amino acids inside them they have nitrogenous compounds or molecules so that's how these nitrogen they make urea they are actually collected they break down the amino acids they collect the nitrogen which is quite soluble and also uh, is um, easily to be excreted so they form urea from it and then inside the kidney this urea will be mixed with the other things to make urine and then will be excreted answer is d question number nine this table shows the composition of a liquid found in the human body so that's a component and the concentration per arbitrary unit in a healthy person which structure contains this liquid so it's a liquid that contains urea and salt doesn't contain glucose no protein no amino acids so urea and the salt forms together you urine so where can you find urine of course we don't find urine inside c and b uh, we don't find in d but we can find in a this is the a which is very uh, important for you to know that the salt and the urea then they are mixed together there and then they uh, can make that uh, condensed form of the urine and make it ready for excretion out of the body and the, this is a ureter A is ureter is a tube that sends the urine which is made inside the kidneys out of the body and send it send it to the actually to the bladder and in the bladder it will be stored and after, after that it goes to the urethra and from the urethra it is excreted out so and then between these ones uh, actually this, this diagram a bit i think have got some problem but between this b in the uh, B is the renal artery and the C is the renal vein and this goes lower part and I'm not going to look at other color and and this one is the yeah this is the art uh, the actually uh, artery too so the renal artery this is artery this is a vein this is a renal artery artery vein renal artery and this is a ureter answer so is a ureter question number 10 which function does not occur in the kidneys in the kidneys breakdown of alcohol we don't have removal of excess salts from the blood removal excess water from the blood removal of urea from the blood urea from the blood so this is correct removal of excess salt excess water urea the, all the job of the kidney well which one is not a breakdown of alcohol that doesn't happen here it's in the liver again okay so answer is a 11 which two substances are both reabsorbed in the kidneys reabsorption um first of all starch here starch is a very big carbohydrate sugar molecule something like that it is quite insoluble you can't find it in the bloodstream to move everywhere and also it's, it should be broken down the digestive system first into a smaller sugar molecules like a glucose maltose or anything else so it can't be found there that's the thing um, so this is not b and d are totally wrong between a and c glucose salt glycogen and salt glycogen is a very insoluble big molecule of, of the sugar again and this glycogen 
uh, usually is to is formed from the sugar molecules are quite insoluble it is stored in the liver so it doesn't move around so c is wrong answer glucose and salt option a 12 what is the function of the kidney uh, it makes glucose and reabsorbing area or urea what is the function of the kidney so making glucose no it doesn't make glucose i said okay, i shouldn't find any glucose in the kidney or in the in the urine so it doesn't make anything it doesn't make things doesn't produce pro, produce any like substances it only forms uh, or condenses the urea and form and mix it with the other like so and water a bit to form urine and nothing else that's the job of it and also reabsorption of the substances that are filtered out uh into the uh boom and capsule or happening there again so making urea and removing salt okay it doesn't make urea urea is being made in the liver it makes it makes urine removing glucose and reabsorbing no it doesn't remove glucose it doesn't it doesn't do that it doesn't remove the glucose that is the point uh i said so however this one is correct but this one is wrong like this one making your is wrong but removing salt maybe sometimes the excess salt can be removed so this is also wrong totally and this is wrong so option d is correct why because it removes the urea and also reabsorbs the glucose it sends the glucose which is filtered into the uh, Bowman capsule, reabsorb it back into the, send it back into the bloodstream. So answer is D. Question number 13, how is urea removed from the body? Um, and in, uh, as insoluble waste, oh, urea is wrong, by being destroyed in the liver, uh and in expired uh, so it's, it's totally this is wrong this is dealing with the lungs in solution as an insoluble waste it should be soluble you know it should be soluble so it can be easily dissolved into the uh, blood and then can be you know form that liquid by being destroyed in the liver yeah and, um, and then in solution the answer of this one should be D, which is in form of the solution. And uh, the other one, which is this is destroyed in the liver, actually, yeah, um, it can be like if you consider that the urea actually it is changed into solution first, and it is. But that is what is broken down into the liver is the amino acid or the proteins that then form urea. But that the amino acids, that nitrogen is destroyed, not the urea. Then the urea is formed in the liver, not being destroyed. So the answer is D in the form of solution. Question number 14, how does blood change, change as it passes through a kidney? Question number 14 says that how does blood change as it passes through a kidney? It gains glucose? Shouldn't. It gains salts. It loses protein. It loses urea. Of course, the blood goes there. The blood goes there. It contains everything. In it. All the nutrients, all the salts and the metals, all the ions are. But of course, protein is not there. Protein is not inside the blood. First should be brought, protein is a very big molecule. It should be first broken down in, and digested into your digestive system, changes into amino acids. Then the amino acid or small molecule can travel into your blood. They can be mixed with it. So that is wrong. Again, salts, salts are there. The glucose is there. Urea is also there. But when it reaches, passes through the kidney, and then leaves the kidney, the purpose of the kidney there is to purify it. It means to remove urea from it. The most 
the, the, the a very important job that the kidney has is to remove urea. So it loses urea. So the answer is D. Question number 15, the table shows the percentage composition of some chemicals found in blood and telling the kidney of a healthy person. What is the percentage composition of the same chemicals in the urine of a healthy person? So we have some options here. So the blood that enters into it. This is the this is where it lives. When we say in the urine, so it is that the, in the urine. So the, the blood comes. It has this much glucose. It has this much protein. It has this much urea. Now look at here. When the urine is formed, it should not be any protein in it. So without even looking at anything else, I can say this is the answer. But Let's see. Glucose, some part of it maybe, but now it shouldn't be any glucose in it. So glucose and protein should not be found in the urine. If you found glucose and protein in a healthy person, it is not a healthy, it should be a problem. So the answer, protein should be zero, glucose should be zero. Urea, yeah, it is condensed. So answer is C. Question number 16, which organs remove excretory products from the blood? From the blood, excretory products from the blood. So is that bladder and liver? No. Bladder and lungs? No, liver produces urea. Bladder, yes, it excretes the excretory product. Bladder is one of the answer, but lung is just, um, for the removal of the gases. So kidneys and bladder is the answer. So C, option C is the correct answer. Question 17, the diagram shows human urinary system. What is the port labor X? This is a ureter. So that's a tube that sends the urine, which is formed inside your kidney, to the bladder to be uh, stored there temporarily. Uh, so this is ureta. Don't make mistakes between these two. Always students, they make mistakes. These are veins also, renal vein and renal artery. They are blood vessels, so it should be these ones, the enter and the Z. And the ureta is the tube only that connects the kidney to the bladder. And the ureta is this spot. Is the spot that uh, sends the urine out. In female, it's short. In the male, longer. Um, 18, a person has a high protein diet, what describes the level of urea in the blood, leaving the liver and the, in the urine, leaving the kidneys, urea in the blood, leaving the liver. The urea in the liver, if you have a high protein diet, so you have, should have a high urea produced in the liver. And urea in the blood, leaving the liver and the urine, leaving the kidneys, in urine, leaving the kidney. So inside the urine, you also should have more urea. So answer is both high. Because the more the protein diet, the more amino acid, the more nitrogenous product. So there are more urea formed in the liver. So there are more urea transferred to the kidney, more urea is filtered in the kidney. So more urine is being formed in the kidney and more urine is being passed out or excreted. Hi, so answer is A. Question number 19, which food type when eaten in excess will cause a rise in urea content of urine? Again, so the same question, but in a different way. That should be protein without even thinking. I said that's protein because it has amino acid. Amino acid, they have uh, nitrogenous based products. So answer is D. Question number 20, uh, Healthy person eats a very high protein diet. What, what effect will this have on their urine? It will contain amino acid, it will contain glucose, it will contain more urea, it will contain more water. Yeah, of course, it contains more urea, ur amino acid, but the urea, but the urea contains uh, urine, more contains more urea. 
not the more amino acids, because the amino acids that are not forming urine, they get broken down first, and the nitrogen is removed from it through the amination, and then that's the nitrogen that forms urea, and the urea forms urine, not the amino acid. So the answer is C, it will contain more urea. Question number 21, the graph shows the risk of sweat production and urine production at different environmental temperatures. Which statement is correct? Um, the rate of the production and environmental temperature. There are two curves on this, and this is the urine, this is the sweat. As the temperature increases, the rate of sweat production decreases. This is for the sweat, and this is for temperature. So the temperature is rising, and the sweat production is increasing. So this is wrong. At 22 Celsius, the rate of sweat and urine productions are the same. Let's see, 22, something in the middle. Here. Yes, they are, there are a junction there. Yeah, but both they met. So let's read the others to make sure that this is the final. Urine and sweat production are directly proportional to environmental temperature. And no, proportional, this is, a, this is not actually a straight line. This is proportional, but this is not. It is bent here. At the, at the beginning, it has no effect on it. When the urine production decreases, the sweat production decreases in both of them they decrease at the same time no that is wrong also the answer is b at 22 at this point at the junction the rate of the strength and urine production are the same both of them the production is between 50 and 100 this is the answer question number 22 which row shows substances that are present in each of these structures in a healthy person again the same thing that has the same question. Renal artery, 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 they bring oxygenated uh, food supply of the blood to the towards the kidney. They bring blood towards the kidney, renal artery. So it should be full of all the materials, I mean, full of urea. It's not been refined yet, okay? It's not been filtered yet. In the renal artery, glucose renal vein so in the renal vein if there is a glucose in the renal artery there should be glucose in a renal vein too because the renal vein should not be excreted because renal artery brings the blood towards the kidney renal vein is send it out of the kidney it means already had been filtered filtered of what so glucose should be left there ureta contains salt what was the ureta? This one. And blood and urea. Okay. Can you find, uh, can you, let me check to see which one we can refer to first. In the ureta. In the ureta is this one. It means that already the urine is being made. In the urine, you shouldn't find any protein. So these two, C and D option, C and D are wrong. I don't read them anymore. I don't waste the time on them. Okay, salt and water. Let's see. Again, I'll go here. In the bladder, between A and B, which one is correct? In the bladder, you have urine. Again, so in the ureter, you have urine. In the bladder, you have urine. In the urethra, you have urine too. Inside these vessels, you shouldn't have any protein. It's a very good molecule. If you have, it means that you've got problem. So B is also wrong because in the bladder is written protein, so it's wrong. So answer is A. Question number 23, which set of conditions would make the percentage of water in the urine decrease the most? Okay, decreasing the water content of the urine, what does that mean? It becomes very condensed. You mean your urine becomes very dark in color. It becomes so much urea, less water. What, what causes this to happen? If you drink less water, if you exercise too much and sweat a lot, you have lost so much water in your body somewhere. That's why it may happen then.
So which set of the conditions would make the percentage of water in the urine decrease the most? Is the temperature of the surroundings. If the temperature is high, it should be high. If you feel hot, you sweat, so you lose water. So you, if you don't drink any water and to, to replace that lost water, your urine will become darker and darker. It means that it lost water. So it become more condensed. Amount of activity. You act, you're more active, you're running, you're doing more work, you're not drinking, you're under the hot, uh, sunny weather. So working there, so it is very dangerous too. So you are dehydrated, so water lost, so your urine becomes more condensed, means there's less water in it. So answer is D. 24, again the diagram, which substance is not found in the liquid at X in a healthy person again. So you look at it. In these structures, urethra, blood, and urethra, there are urine in it. Urine is the end product of this, is the final stage. I mean, the, the urine is made here inside the kidneys. Still, there is urea is being mixed and going through all those processes. Now, when it enters into urethra, bladder, and urethra, it is urine there now. This is changing to urine. So which substance you shouldn't find in the urine? Glucose, you shouldn't find protein. You shouldn't find, um, and these are, if you found find them, it means that there is a problem somewhere in your kidney and you are not healthy. So salt, some salt, excess salt can be found in the urine. If there are too much salt in your body and some of them are necessary, they should be actually go into your, your urine you should find it here and some toxins of course because that's the excreted and the urea also because it forms the main part of the urine so what is not found in this liquid which is urine here is glucose which is option a you shouldn't find it glucose is always necessary for respiration of the cells this is very important for functioning of the cell is gives you energy. So no matter if you need or you do not need it, is it excess or not, it will be stored in your body for later use. 25, won't be excreted. 25, in which order does urea pass through structures in the body? Okay. Urea passes through which structures? It is produced. I know that it is produced in the liver. So this is the first station. Urea states its travel from liver. So the first A and B are, are incorrect because it's not from kidney, it's a reversed actually. It's a reversed path. So we just between C and D, we see which one. Liver, kidney, urethra, and urethra, there are the other structures of the kidney. So liver from liver should go to kidney, then to urethra, the urethra. So answer is C. D also is wrong. 26, which materials are excreted by kidneys and lungs? Kidneys, urea, definitely. So between C and D, which one now? Lungs, they don't excrete urea, they excrete carbon dioxide. The answer is C. 27, which substances is lost from the body by kidneys, lungs, and skin? Okay, carbon dioxide, kidney, no. Skin, no, through the lungs. Excess ions, no, lung, no at all. Urea, lungs and urea, mm, no, is a no. Yes, if the urea can be found in the kidney, can be excreted through the skin also, because your sweat is a combination of the urea, salts, and all of this thing, and water. But ions are lost to your, maybe through your skin and also through your kidneys and also carbon dioxide to only through your lungs. But so what is left is D, water is the answer. Water is lost in, through, in your kidney, can be some part of excess water can be uh, go into your kidney and form because without the water, of course, the you, your urine won't be that liquid, so in making that solution, there should be some water there. In the lungs, the water is lost in a form of the water vapor. 
if you hold and it's something a glass in front of your mouth and just um, exhale or breathe out you will find the all water droplets forming on the surface of the glass it means that your breath has water vapor in it and also your skin that sweat is in a liquid form so it's mixed with the water okay so answer is D. 28. Which organ produces urea? Bladder? It doesn't produce. It stores the urea. The kidney? Actually, it produces urine. Liver? Yes, it produces urea. So the answer is C. I don't continue with pancreas. Pancreas is, produces hormones, I think, also, actually, and both, yeah. 29. Blood passes through the kidney and some substances leave the blood as filtered liquid. From this liquid, certain substances are reabsorbed back into the blood. The table below shows substances in the blood plasma, the filtered liquid, and urine. Which substances are reabsorbed from the filtered liquid? Okay. This is the filtered liquid. If I want to know which substances are being reabsorbed, I should look at the urine and also look at the plasma. Blood plasma has these substances. You look at the concentration of them, protein, urea, water, 0 0.10. Then in the urine, it means that this is the filtered liquid. It means the filter after the filtration, the urine is formed, isn't it? So all, not all the filtered liquid is changed into urine. Some of the substances are lost here again, see? So all the glucose is filtered inside in the liquid. But after that, when it forms the urine, it means that it is reabsorbed because nothing is left in the urine from glucose. So this person is also healthy. Protein, yes. Uh, there is nothing actually here so no filtration no reabsorption so this is totally off urea uh, all had been filtered yes you see even the in the urine there are more concentration of it so this is no reabsorption of the urea only for timing is glucose water 90 changed to 99 all of them are being filtered all are filtered because amount of the water in the urea is more than plasma. It means that all had been filtered. There is no reabsorption. Only, I think, I think I see only glucose here. Yeah. Let me see. Oh yeah, sorry. In the filtered liquid is 99, then changed to 97. So it means some part of the water is also reabsorbed. Only a small amount of it. There is a reabsorption of the water. So water and glucose, A is the answer. Very small amount of 99 is the concentration in the liquid bath, in the filtered liquid bath, in the urine became 97. It dropped a bit. So it means it has gone somewhere where it is reabsorbed. It's gone back to the blood. So glucose and water is answer. Question number 30, this is the diagram again about the kidney and the blood vessels, artery and the vein and the ureter. In the health of the baby, which is structure, transport glucose, glucose, artery only, artery and ureter, artery and vein, ureter. Glucose cannot be found in the ureter. It's, ureter, first of all, is not the blood vessel. That's a part of the kidney. It's a, it's a tube that collects all the urine, which is formed inside your kidney and send it to the, down to the bladder to store it. Not, it's temporarily. Artery and veins are blood vessels. So we are talking about them, which is structure transport glucose. In the ureter, in the urine, which is urine inside it, you shouldn't find any glucose or protein. The, the shouldn't, in a healthy person, you shouldn't find any. That's why it says healthy person. Is actually emphasizing on it. In artery and vein, there are glucose and protein. Okay, but um, you should know that. So if you cannot find it in the ureter, which is urine in it, so it means that all of them should be, if it is, it is uh, filtered from the artery, into, for example, kidney, then it should be reabsorbed back into your vein. So in the both artery and the vein, you should find uh, glucose and sugar. So the answer, 
uh, glucose is should be RT and vein, which is C. Number 31, which label the structure contains urine again? So A, um, A is the artery, B, vein, and C is a renal artery, then D is ureter. Ureter contains urine, bladder contains urine, Urethra contains urine. The rest they contain urea. But you shouldn't find you shouldn't find urea in the vein. Okay. So the answer was D. 32. What do these results show? Okay, the table shows the amount of water and salt lost from the kidneys and the skin on a hot day and on a cold day. Food and drink intake are the same on both days cold and hot. What does this result show? This is a cold day, water loss from kidney, skin, salt, kidney. Less water is lost from the kidney on a cold day than on a hot day. Water, less water is lost from the kidney in a cold day than on a hot day. No, it is more, 1.8 compared to 0 0.4. So it is more, that A is wrong. B, more salt is lost from the kidneys, kidney salt from the kidney, on a hot day than a cold day. No, on a cold day is 20.2, it is more than hot day. The total amount of salt lost each day is the same, I will look at into this later. And water is not lost from the kidneys on hot days. On kidneys, water on a hot day. This is wrong. The total amount of salt lost each day is the same. Let's see. 20.2. And... Yes, you should, you should uh, sum them up. 20.2 plus 0, no. And so it becomes 20.2 from the cold day, overall salt lost. And the overall salt loss in the hot day is 14.4 plus 5.8, which is becomes total 20.2. That You see that both days, they are the same. The total amount of the salt lost every day is the same. So answer is C. 33. Blood is filtered in the kidneys. After this filtration, some substances are reabsorbed into the blood and other substances pass out of the body in the urine. Which line shows the correct movement of substances in a healthy person? Substances reabsorb into the blood, substances pass out of the blood body in the urine. So what you can find in the urine, what you can find uh, in the, during the reabsorption. So in the reabsorption, in the reabsorption, the urea should not be sent back into the blood. It should not be reabsorbed. The purpose of all these things is just to remove urea, which is very toxic from your body. So it shouldn't be re reabsorbed. So option A, C and D definitely are wrong because the substance is reabsorbed into the blood. There is urea in that, in those options, you see? So I know without reading further any other, other, any other things, B is the answer, definitely. So because the other options that contain urea in the reabsorbed uh, substances into blood, which is wrong. And in, if you look at the substances pass out of the body in the urine, so what you shouldn't find in the urine is glucose. So again, all A, C, and D are wrong by looking at that column. Substances pass out into the from the body into urine in the form of urine, so it shouldn't be glucose in it. So answer is B definitely. Question number thirty-four, which is still got time. Four urine 
Samples were collected on different days from the person whose exercise and water intake was the same uh, each day. Which sample was collected on a cold day? Volume of the urine, volume of the sweat produced. In a cold day, you should sweat less, so your urine becomes more higher. Okay, so let's have a look. The highest amount of urine is A. And the volume of the sweat produced, I think should be A, the answer. <clears throat> Your answer should be A for this topic because when the weather is cold, when the weather is cold, we sweat less, so water in the urine should be more, more, it means that more urine volume and less sweat volume uh, also. So the answer should be A. The answer should be A because there is more volume of the urine. There is more water in it, so it is more volume, high is higher. And the sweat should be usually less or stays the same here yeah, because it's cold. So that's the answer. 35. The table shows an analysis of urine and blood of uh, after filtration in the kidney. Which substance is completely reabsorbed by the kidney? Again, so in the blood and in the urine, when you compare them, if it is reabsorbed, you should find less amount of the substance or nothing at all. So glucose, you see, it was this much, now it is zero, so it is reabsorbed. It is sent back to the blood. Salt, no, it's more, so it's no reabsorption. Urea, even it is more, it's no reabsorption. 90 become 97, or even it is more, so no reabsorption. So which substance is reabsorbed? Only glucose. Because the number or amount of it in the urine now is less compared to blood. 36. What describes the excretion of urea? So urea, it has nothing to do with the undigested food. That's the defecation. Removal of metabolic waste, okay, can be. Removal of substances in excess, yes, can be. Removal of the toxic products also can be. So the answer, except the first one, the first column is, uh, uh, the, the first column actually uh, has got some, uh, is wrong. So by looking at this, we should know that um, the answer should be B because the removal of the undigested food is the job of your elementary canal and they, it's called as defecation. For, yes, so the answer is B. 37, the average percentage of water in human urine is 96%. This percentage changes when condition change. We set of condition we make the percentage of water in urine decrease most. I mean, we have percentage of water decrease, which means that your urine become more condensed, less water in it. What causes it? Temperature of the surrounding should be high. So you sweat more, you lose more water. Amount of activity should be do more activity. And also amount of water drunk should take less water. So by looking at this, the temperature, if it is high between C and D, which one is correct? The activity should be high. So answer is D, I don't continue. So you have to, in a hot weather, doing more, working harder, and for drinking less, you will decrease your uh, urine concentrations, become darker, become thicker, become and it is not healthy actually i should be careful so that's the end of this question paper topical question paper about the excretion in the human being and is a multiple choice question past paper igcs is 060610 thank you very much for paying attention and watching this video uh, see you all again for another